What are some things you've noticed that are blatantly sexist but are so normalized? Oh boy, do I have something for you. The disrespect of educators in America. For a female dominated profession, it is so blatantly obvious that the sexism is real when it comes to education. Why is it that when we want to fix something, change something, advocate for ourselves or our students, we are just whining or we are just complaining or we should just be happy with what we get? If the profession was male dominated, I guarantee you the pay would be higher and I guarantee you that the respect would be through the roof. But we're women. Okay, so what are some things you've noticed that are blatantly sexist? Referring to a healthcare professional as a male nurse or a lady doctor. Unless you are using your genitals to perform a job, it is not gender specific. <laughs> Come on, you guys. It's 2022. Do better. Okay, so what are some things you've noticed that are blatantly sexist? The cost of women's beauty products. There's actually a name for it. It's called the pink tax. It's gender-based pricing that upcharges women for beauty products versus the exact same men's grooming products. A perfect example of this is refillable razor cartridges. Razors in pink packaging targeted towards women are about $19. The exact same razor placed in blue packaging and targeted towards men are about $14. Is bullshit. In 2018, a California Congresswoman introduced a bill to repeal the pink tax, but the Republican male majority shot it down. So all of us ladies out here are living our best lives, paying more for beauty products. The pink tax is blatantly sexist. It should be repealed. But the beauty industry in general should be doing better. Okay, so what are some things you've noticed that are blatantly sexist, but are so normal? How male actors like Ryan Gosling and Leonardo DiCaprio can play the lead actor, love interest character, their entire careers, but each time their female co-star love interest gets younger. What are some things you've noticed that are blatantly sexist, but are so normalized? Okay, I got this. Story time. So the other day I was at a family barbecue, right? So it was me, my man, his brother, friends, and we're just enjoying ourselves, all the fixings, great time, wonderful food. And then about mm, halfway through the barbecue, um, my man's brother notices that his dad hasn't come out of whatever his little hobby room and doing his things and decides, well, we should probably make a plate for dad. Now, mind you, there are six of us, six adults, sitting around the table. I'm the only one with a uterus. His brother thinks it's appropriate to look at me and be like, hey, Jen. My response, just because I'm the only one with a uterus doesn't mean I should be the person you are asking to do the task. Yeah. Dead silence. No response. So what are some things you've noticed that are blatantly sexist, but are so normalized? How easily we accept alcoholism in women to the point that we make light of it. I am directly referencing wine moms. And, you know, it's a thing that we label as local or basic or chuggy. But when you really look at the whole scenario, a lot of these women are married to a literal man child. And they are so dissatisfied with their life that they need to escape reality every night by drinking. And these women are just like run ragged, right? Like not only do they have a partner who only contributes a paycheck, health insurance, and mediocre dick sometimes, they probably have kids too, which is just like additional endless labor. And there's just no available support system for these women. So they turn to alcohol and then it becomes a joke. And nobody is raising the red flags like they would for a dad who relies on alcohol to get through things. And it's just really sad because women and moms deserve better you've noticed that are blatantly sexist but are so normalized within society correct me if i'm wrong i will be corrected but it always seems like from what i've heard there's only one domestic abuse shelter open for men 
ever at one time in the United States. Never more than one. For some reason, when female teachers have sex with their underage students, they're never called rapists. Family court and how often the women are granted full custody and the men have to pay child support. Speaking of child support systems, when you actually see how it works, how the whole system works, and how much men have to pay based on their income, no matter how much they make, and then they struggle. Now, yes, women go through stuff. I'm not delegitimizing anything women go through and the standard society puts on them. But these things that happen to men get blatantly ignored. What are some things you've noticed that are blatantly sexist, but are so normalized? Nerd culture. The coding of sexism and misogyny is so strongly tied to the idea of a masculine, manly man. And people who embody those traits or hobbies, like successful businessmen, jocks, sports guys, partiers, bikers, truckers, whoever, that when nerd culture arose in the mid-20th century, it was immediately accepted as a counterculture. But it was always a boys club. And you can see this very directly in its media, especially in sci-fi fantasy universes that have lots of deep, rich lore. And you can see this reflected from a relatively innocuous othering of women by circles of nerdy men, all the way to the most problematic and downright abusive levels that you can imagine, as well as in the industries that create and promote nerd culture. For those of you who live through Gamergate, you know what I'm talking about. And since society still doesn't depict nerd culture as misogynistic like they met with other cultures, people within those communities continue to blame others and explain it away instead of taking responsibility. So I encourage you to take a look at yourself and the media you consume and try to have conversations with people that don't talk or think like you. So we can together start to fix this problem. Notice that are blatantly sexist, but are so normalized within society. This one really gets under my skin and I always correct it when I hear it. So when the mother has to go run errands or have a girl's night out and the father has to watch the kids, people like to call that babysitting. Oh, that's so sweet, you're babysitting today. Or, hey, I can't make it, I gotta babysit the kids. You can't babysit your own kids. It's called being a father, it's called being a parent. You will never, ever, ever, ever hear someone address a mother watching her kids as babysitting. It's called being a mom, and it should be the same for being a dad. But it's not. What are some things you've noticed that are blatantly sexist? Aside from every other product that has ever come to existence, notice how female deodorant usually doesn't do the trick. Your armpits might smell good, maybe for a couple minutes. Then you try men's deodorant, it works perfectly, stays on for a day, you don't smell as bad. Why is a product to mask our odor different for men and women? Shouldn't we all have the same deodorant? I already know Joe Schmo is going to come on here and be like, well, it smells different, the male deodorant smells manly. Okay, Joe, riddle me this. Razors, same deal. No reason why there should be any distinction between female and male razors. Plus, coincidentally, Razors that are for men are typically cheaper than razors that are for women. Bottom line, there are so many products that gender separation is so unnecessary. 10 likes and I'll shave my legs in part two. <laughs> this is oversimplifying what I am saying. I am not blaming a single person or peoples for this problem. Thank you.